Olivia Trompetta, um, representing our, our DEI um, Council. And uh, Olivia, I'm gonna allow you to uh, introduce Tron and the interview that we have in store. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, good morning, Kevin. Thank you for the introduction. I'm doing well, how are you? I'm great. I'm really uh, excited about this conversation and, and Tron, good to see you. Uh, thanks for being here this morning. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. It's great to meet you. Absolutely. Um, far be it from me to uh, clog up the airways here. So Olivia, I'm gonna hand the mic to you and uh, take it away. Thank you, thank you. Well, good morning and happy Friday, Dominion Payroll. I am super excited to have my friend Tran Trung here to join us this morning in our discussion of LGBTQ+. A little bit of things you should know about Tran. He is recognized for his activism, such as raising over $4,000 last summer for the BLM movement, to raising $8,000 with 100% match with Adobe. So overall raising $16,000 in donations for the Asian American and Pacific Islanders, um, or AAPI, as we you know, had our email last month about AAPI. Aside from that, he's also currently holding his own podcast on Spotify, so you can scroll on there and try to um, find Tran on there. He's hosting a podcast called Girls and the Gays, where he's talking about navigating through life and influencing others to live their best life and how to be their best selves. With everything he does, he is a first generation student and a double minority being gay and Vietnamese American. So let's go ahead and get started. How are you doing this morning, Tran? I am so good. Coffee is running through me. I'm ready to unpack this conversation. But before, let me preface by saying thank you so much for having me on. It's crazy to see, you know, our life kind of come full circle from undergrad to, you know, now navigating our early 20s in our career. It's truly a blessing. So thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. You know, when it came to this kind of topic, I really thought about like who is someone's truly passionate, who is somebody who's really impacted the community, and you're one of my first people to think of. So very excited to share your passion and share the edu um, your knowledge in this topic. And on top of that, like it's just going to be a great morning with you, Tran. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. So. Why is it important to spread awareness of LGBTQ+, the history of it, and what does it mean to you, LGBTQ+, Pride Month? Yeah, most definitely. So again, I think you prefaced very well in the beginning, you know, being first generation and Vietnamese American and then being gay, different lenses of being the minority, you know, can be definitely challenging, especially when growing up in a very traditional family. Like my parents, all they wanted me to do was like, if you know, like in Asian culture, it's very like, be a doctor, be a lawyer, and just do that and make money and like make your parents proud. Because I think the why is kind of deeply rooted in the sacrifices they've made. So they kind of live through your lens and the opportunities that you have that they didn't otherwise have. And so that pressure kind of definitely aided my why and kind of why I was here. And so I think why it's so important to have that conversation is, you know, a wider scope of understanding the minority. And oftentimes, if you're not going through it, living, breathing it, or walking in those shoes, then it's hard for you to kind of understand, for you to understand the perspective. But again, challenging your beliefs and broadening her, your horizon and your scope of knowledge will definitely help, you know, everybody level up in society and grow as grow as one unit and one oiled, well-oiled machine. Right. A hundred percent, I'm a hundred percent agree. Definitely kind of takes a very empathetic side of you trying to understand what is it like to be in someone else's shoes and what they're processing and like what are some possible daily obstacles that they may be going through in their lives. Yeah. So that's an easy transition of our next question of what are some of the issues that we should be aware of or may not know about of what's going on in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, I'll say like honestly prefacing and just being very transparent and full visibility. Like I'm not an expert, you know, like everything comes from my own experience, whether it be talking on girls and the gays, my podcast, or just being very forthright with my experience, right? Everything comes from my own lived experience. And so I think with society, obviously there's always going to be areas of improvement and not just being like, you know, like um slapping a band-aid on the issue. So you it you really need to start from management down. And so I would say, you know, I have noted here, like creating a safe space. I know for me working at Adobe, like 
little things that our company does really well is just even emails or, hey, like we acknowledge our LGBTQIA+, like happy Pride Month, little things like that definitely goes a long way. It makes you feel that there is a safe space. I think also just making sure that there's actual action there as well and not just something performative is also very going to be important and really catering toward that change and having people actually step into that hard conversation. If it's something new for you, it's going to challenge your beliefs. But again, how can you really grow unless you step outside of your comfort zone and be challenged on your day to day thinking? And so I think a light cadence of meetings or like having speakers come on will definitely help um, create that safe space and really cement it with actual intentional action. I 100% agree having these meaningful conversations, continuing to spread awareness and, you know, hopefully have like a deeper understanding and deeper conversations amongst each other as em um, employees, employers, co-workers, colleagues, things like that. It allows us to be a little more vulnerable, be open about our stories and once again, open up that empathetic side of like, this is these are my experiences, but also um, these are my experiences, but I want to understand what are your own experiences too. So definitely 100% agree as always of how else our employers can also support L LGBTQ um, Q plus employees. Um, aside from that, you know, Tran, I'm always listening to your podcast. I'm slowly catching up. There is a little bit of a part of um, where I just couldn't keep up, but now I'm getting back into listening to it. And on your podcast, you're always preaching of like, you know, just go out and do it. Like if there's something that's holding you back or like there's something you really want to do, just go for it, live your best life, continuing being better, um, being a better person. So always talking, be, talking about being the best version of yourself. What does that really mean and how do we get there? Yeah. So as you know, like, um, I, don't, I definitely understand. There's definitely pod, like a lot of episodes. So for Pride Month, I've been doing um, double episodes a week. And so usually my episodes go live on Monday and Friday for this month at least. And I think I talk a lot about intentional action and deliberateness in your life and truly living out your purpose because, you know, as us, like, you know, my target audience is like 20 something year olds, kind of like us navigating the corporate space really navigating our career and while balancing so many different hobbies because although we're passionate about our corporate life or our 40 hour week we also have an identity outside of that so what does that look like how do you balance that and on top of that like little fun stuff like dating life everything and i think i talk about a lot about intentional living because i think that's a huge missed opportunity where people get to the end of the, their life and was like dang like I didn't live out my life, I just existed. So what's the difference between existing, floating, being, you know, a floating head in society versus somebody who's truly actually living out their purpose and carrying forward with intentional action and deliberateness? Because I truly have felt that, you know, navigating post-grad, how can I achieve that and accomplish that? Like, it's through intentional living and living out, like, my authenticity and unapologetically myself. And I believe that if I can show how far you can go and be the testimony for that, other people, part of the minority, whether it be gay, Asian, whatever that looks like, the minority of the room, you really feel purposeful with your why and why you decide to, you know, every single day take intentional action for the life you decide to live out. Yes, definitely. Like all of our actions count for something, whether you believe it or not, always telling yourself, like, even if it's not 100 percent, like, what you have done so far is definitely something something to be recognized and definitely something to be proud of. Like, you know, maybe you weren't able to take a shower today, but you were able to get out of bed. That's like 100 percent. Good job. Give yourself a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. You're able to brush your teeth. Good job. Keep going and like slowly get there kind of thing, um, kind of thing. So definitely intention, um, be intentional. And on top of that, like every little thing that you do makes an impact and does does positively affect um, affect you. And then lastly, my last question for you. So Tran, when it comes to your podcast, I promise you, man, I want to have like a whole wall of your quotes and your mantras and all the tips that you have about continuing your personal growth. Do you have any tips that you would like to share or any mantras you want to share about how we can continue our personal growth? Yeah, I think I think it's easy for me to be here and be like, oh, um, 
to speak at people and like it's granted like I don't know everybody on the call unfortunately but I think it's easy for me to sit here and like kind of like bloat about like all like my accolades or whatever that might look like but I think the biggest purpose behind what has driven toward my why is adversity whether it be I remember um I had an eviction letter on my door growing up and my parents were bankrupt and I didn't know and I I was like mom why is there a policeman at the door and um that had always stuck out in my memory growing up and kind of aided my purpose today in the sense of knowing that you know it's my only shot at life this is the only chance I'll ever have to really carry out my purpose and go as far as I want to so why die with my passions inside right why limit my why limit my purpose why water down my potential and I think that's something that everybody can apply to their life like everybody wants to be somebody right like you don't want to come home to your parents being like oh I got an F on this test or oh, I didn't get the promotion everybody wants to do something and accomplish something at deep down inside if you think introspectively enough and I think as I sit here and again like talk about all these things that I do it's easy for me to talk about it but rise from adversity I would say that is like to your the mantra question is like ride from rise from adversity and how can that add as fuel toward where you're trying to go again relating back to my bankruptcy um, story and I think that might sound like common sense or all the fluff that we're talking about might sound like common sense but common sense isn't common practice people oftentimes kind of like brush it off to the last minute and then all of a sudden they're like dang I'm at the end of my life and I didn't carry out my life purpose or live live like intentionally and I think that's a missed opportunity and I just think follow your north star and come home to who you're supposed to be in your intuition and you're going to be just great and follow out the legacy you're destined to continue right a hundred percent oh almost got me tearing up this morning Tran. <laughs> thank you so much for right. um all your wisdom thank you for sharing your story coming on to here like i 100 percent appreciate and of course i encourage you to con um, continue with your career always be thriving and everything and just have good vibes and good energy going to your direction thank you thank you thank you Hey, Olivia and Tran, thank you both so much um, for this. Olivia, thanks for bringing Tran on. Um, Tran, I I will definitely have a bounce in my step on this Friday. Um, I I love the phrase um, "Don't die with your passion inside you." That's that's wonderful. Um, and I mean, just what a great message as we head into the weekend, everybody. Um, you know, gay, straight, black, brown, white, otherwise, um, you know, the, these messages resonate with all of us. And, um, you know, I, I just, I sincerely want to thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning um, and sharing your story. Um, and uh, thanks to Olivia for uh, contributing to um, Dominion Payroll Celebration of Pride Month. Really appreciate that. Um, all right, we guys, we're at 831. Um, so everybody have a great Friday, go into a beautiful weekend, remember to relax, unplug, um, and everybody, we will see you on Monday morning. Um, all right, everybody, take care. Max, have a good one, buddy. Thank you, you too. Goodbye, DP. Bye.